All right, we'll get started here. Um, introducing myself, uh, Vijay Pawar, uh, Director of Product Management. Uh, my team actually deals with Mobile Ion Sentry, uh, Mobile Ion Tunnel, uh, which you will see referenced in this presentation. And I'm really excited to talk about Mobile Ion Access. Access is a exciting new offering from Mobile Iron, and really exciting because it deals with cloud-based security services. It's how do you secure access to cloud-based services. So let's just jump inside mobility and cloud. Most customers, knowingly or unknowingly, and hopefully not unknowingly, are moving to cloud-based services. Uh, a lot with Office 365. Traditionally, the email was on-premise, but Microsoft is aggressively moving customers to Office 365. And guess what? What's happening is mobile apps are the number one way enterprise cloud services are being accessed. There's also a statistics out, out there which says by 2018, 85% of cloud services will be accessed via mobile apps. So what's really important to look at is, it's not just mobile devices going and accessing cloud applications, but look at the mobile apps. The data is actually flowing into these mobile applications, okay? And what's really important to look at is the mobile app to cloud security challenge. This is really important, and you'll see this term being used more and more by Mobile Iron, which is the mobile app to cloud security problem. And it's really important as customers start moving to cloud-based services, especially when the users are using mobile devices, because traditional cloud security vendors cannot solve this on their own. And by traditional cloud security vendors, we talk about some of the identity and access management vendors that have cloud-based services or on-premise services. Also, very importantly, a, a new form or a new product line called CASBs. Uh, hopefully, customers have heard about CASBs. CASBs are the cloud access security brokers. They are different mechanisms that they try to solve cloud-based security. But as we outline here in this presentation, it's really important to understand the challenges that mobility brings to cloud-based services. So, let's look at a few use cases in terms of the mobile app to cloud security problem. Here you have your device on the left going to your cloud-based services. Think of a salesperson, okay, trying to get to salesforce.com on an iPad at home. They've left their device, they quickly got their spouse's or daughter's iPad, downloaded Salesforce One application, which is in the App Store, right? That's the beauty of mobility. You can download stuff from the App Store, downloads the application, and even if the organization is using strong authentication, they're using username and password with a two-factor, does not matter because what's going to happen is that app is going to authenticate using whatever mechanism, username and password, two-factor authentication, but that enterprise data is going to go down all the way to this untrusted device, okay? So it's really in important to understand that the first problem here is an untrusted device problem. Okay, why is that important? Because one, that particular device might not even have any controls, like a device passcode, okay? Anybody, if that iPad is shared, user can get access, or any user can get access to that Salesforce data. What about the open-end controls? That data, which is within the Salesforce application, can be shared with other untrusted applications. Also, if it is rooted, jailbroken, there's a chance that malicious apps can actually get to that sensitive corporate data. So this is the first challenge, which is an untrusted device problem. Let's look at another scenario, right? Let's suppose it is mobile iron managed or EMM managed. You have a container out there, okay, and it's the salesperson's you know, managed uh, device, okay? Same thing. This is the untrusted application problem. The salesperson can go to the app store, download Salesforce One. Remember, Salesforce One is still a secure application. It's, it's created by Salesforce. How can it not be? Um, insecure, or, or how can it not be secure, right? 
but it's outside the container. Okay, that's really important to understand because the user went and downloaded it from the App Store. Again, whatever mechanisms, they can log in using two-factor authentication, but that data, again, is in this, it's outside the container, right? Sitting inside this untrusted application. And this is what we're calling the sloppy app problem. Sloppy because the person just went there, didn't go to the right controls, didn't go to the enterprise app store, went to the publicly available store and downloaded the sloppy app, okay? All the controls are outside the EMM container, okay? Again, that data is outside the container. You have the open-in problem where you can take that data, share it with other unmanaged applications, which can then share it to untrusted destinations. Think if that app shared it with a personal Dropbox application. The data goes out to Dropbox. And let's consider a third use case, okay? Which is not the Salesforce One application, but as we know, Salesforce itself has hundreds of ISVs writing to their platform. Sales Mesh is an interesting application out there, right? The salesperson actually thought it was cool. The reason being, it can download Salesforce data and make it available offline. So they strongly authenticate, doesn't matter, but all that data comes down and it is available offline. Well, guess what? If the person leaves the organization and you wipe out the EMM side of this container, that data is still resident on the device in that application and basically your data has walked off. It's wandered off, right? And this is what we are calling the parasite app problem, okay? It's a parasite app because it's getting all this information and it's storing it on that device, okay, that the person, which is outside the boundaries, outside the control of even EMM. Obviously that brings in big compliance issues, right? You have your corporate sensitive information sitting in an untrusted application. So, the mobile to app security problem. As I mentioned before, there are cloud security vendors, uh, identity access management vendors in the space, cloud access security brokers, good solutions, but they cannot solve the mobile app to cloud problem. The reason being, it's you have to be concerned about those applications, okay? Because once the data comes down to the untrusted applications, they can be leaked out. Really important to understand that it's a mobile app to cloud security problem. So as I mentioned, it's just not Salesforce, right? It's Box that's building an ecosystem. These are all cloud services. They have big platforms. They have hundreds of ISVs writing to them, including Office 365, Office 365 applications. You can't solve it on a per app basis. You need a horizontal solution which you can apply to solve this mobile app to cloud security problem. Introducing mobile ion access. That's what mobile ion access provides. It's solving the mobile app to cloud security challenge. What it does is it provides you conditional access to your cloud services from mobile apps and browsers. Also, Obviously, the problem here, as we saw before, the challenge was data going down to your apps and your data wandering away. That's the problem that mobile ion access solves. Also, very importantly, it's giving you visibility and analytics. You can find out which users from which devices using which applications are getting to your cloud services. Visibility is really important in this case because you have a mobile to cloud problem. It, before, it used to be within your enterprise. Now the devices are outside your network, the applications are outside your network. How do you know who's accessing what from where, under what condition? That's what mobile iron access gives you. So let's look at a high level architecture of how this works. So you have your devices on the left side, again, you have your cloud-based services. And typically what happens in an organization is, when you embrace the cloud-based services, you don't want individual silos of usernames and passwords. Obviously you don't want a separate username and password in Box, a separate username and password in Salesforce. 
So typically what an organization does is uses what are called identity providers or identity and access management solutions. Just to lay out a few out there, CA, SiteMinder is one, Oracle, Access Manager, Tivoli Access Manager, Ping Identity is a big player. You have upcoming cloud access vendors like Okta, one login. So what you do is you configure your cloud service provider, which is Salesforce, Box, Office 365, to point to those identity and access management vendors. What that means is when you go to authenticate to Salesforce, you're redirected to authenticate to your identity providers. Okay? So let's see how this works at a high level. You have an application, let's say the Salesforce One application. User clicks on it, typically what happens is the application goes to its cloud service provider. So the Salesforce One app will go to Salesforce and Salesforce would have redirected you to your identity provider. What we are doing here is using Mobile Ion product like Mobile Ion Tunnel. Now, hopefully people know about Mobile Ion Tunnel. Mobile Ion Tunnel is our per application VPN. It works with managed applications, and managed applications on iOS are a good way of knowing that one, the device is under compliance, and two, you know that it's coming from a trusted application. That's what Tunnel gives you. So Tunnel is a key component of this. So from a user perspective, they click on Salesforce One, Tunnel comes up, the traffic goes to Salesforce, our box, and instead of directing you to your identity provider, the traffic, authentication traffic, is redirected to mobile ion access. So basically, mobile ion access, we are injecting ourselves in the authentication flow. The user doesn't know. What happens is the traffic comes to access. Now, access checks whether the device is trusted, whether the application is trusted, and if all is good, it passes you on to your actual identity provider, which is your authentication server, like the Octas, the Pings, uh, the CA SiteMinders. It gets out of the way, and the authentication happens between the app and your identity provider. We'll dig into uh, the actual flows in a bit, but at a high level, that's what the architecture is. That is how the traffic from any application can flow through mobile and access, which then enforces device and application trust. So conditional access policies is what mobile and access provides you. Tunnel is a key component, and actually not just tunnel. This also works with our app tunnel applications. So if you're familiar with our secure browser, Web at Work, Docs at Work, or in-house applications that you've written uh, that use App Connect and App Tunnel, can also use mobile and access. So tunnel is a key component. Also, the admin can create allow block policies, okay? User agent, the user agent is actually information that flows to mobile and access from the app. What is a user agent? User agent is a way for the app to send app-related information in the HTTP traffic, okay? So typically a user agent, for example, on an iPad, if you use a browser on an application, it will tell you that it's an iPad. It'll tell you other elements about the application. That can be leveraged by the admin, okay, to make allow block rules. So for example, you could say, all tunneled applications are allowed, because I know it's a managed app, it's a managed device, but I'm gonna block the Safari browser, or I'm gonna block the Chrome browser. Those are all well-defined user agents that an admin can create in a allow block policy. Also important is IP address. If you wanted to get really stringent in which apps can get access to your cloud-based services, say it's a really sensitive application, financial application, cloud-based application, you could set an IP range there saying that only corporate IP addresses can access that particular cloud service. So again, you get a, a lot of granularity in creating these conditional access policies. Block access or remediation page. Now what's very important is, it's all good when an app is allowed, but what if that Salesforce One app which was downloaded, or the Sales Mesh app which was downloaded by the salesperson, he didn't know, was going in there, trying to get to the cloud service, and what if they suddenly got blocked? 
and they didn't know why they got blocked. This page is something mobile and access can inject. We, had, we did not need to do any work with Salesforce or Microsoft. It's not that Microsoft would work with us to put our stuff within their applications, but since it's all working on what's called federation standards, and we'll get inside the details of what is called federation or single sign-on standards, the company can actually create this page which gives the user information on why it was blocked. You know, it prevents bad security behavior. You could inform the user, one, go register your device. Two, if it's a registered device, you could say, go to your enterprise app store and download the Salesforce One application, which is the managed application from your enterprise app store. So just in terms of a user experience and behavior, it's, it gives you a great experience because now the user knows they're not going to call up the help desk. They have information out there. There are things like a help link that you can put in there, take you to a, maybe even a video saying, hey, this is the right way for you to download your application and access your Salesforce or your cloud-based services. This is something that mobile line access can provide. So what are the advantages out here, right? You have the mobile apps trying to get to the enterprise cloud services going through mobile line access. What's very important is access is getting feeds, right? You're getting a feed of the user, device, and application, right? And we can actually enforce and help the user to remediate. If, if it's a bad app, we can actually inform the user with that block access page on the right actions they need to take. Also very importantly, as I said before, you have the cloud security uh, vendors today, but they can't work with mobile cloud apps. I don't know if people have tried, but mobile cloud apps cannot be secured by these cloud vendors. Mobile Iron has a unique position with mobile Iron access where one, we can secure the device and the app. Two, we can actually take the traffic through the cloud access security brokers. So cloud access security brokers, if people are not familiar, are some of them are inline proxies and they inspect the data that is flowing through to Box. So they could say, hey, Joe is downloading this particular, um, uh, or has shared this particular file with somebody outside your organization, block it. Or there's anomalous behavior happening here where you know, Joe sales guy has just suddenly downloaded all the sales contact doesn't look like proper behavior that, and they can actually block that. But what the CASBs can't do is, one, give you device posture, two, give you application posture. That's why it needs to be a holistic solution which includes mobile line access. And that's the point here, which is you can get user-based authentication with cloud, um, you know, cloud security vendors, but in order to correlate the device and the app to the user, in real time is done by mobile ion access. And obviously what's important, as I said before, we can do this because we are leveraging what are called federation standards. These are standards around SAML, which is the security assertion markup language, which is a predominant standard which is used by most of the top cloud uh, enterprise providers, like the Salesforce's Office 365 applications, Concur, Workday, all of them use the standard of SAML. And we did not need to do any specific API integration here with any of the cloud vendors or the respective native applications. So let's look at the big picture here. You have your traditional desktops, you have the new mobile devices, you have enterprise-based applications and cloud-based applications. Because most of our customers really still have on-premise enterprise applications. So you have Mobile Iron today. Mobile Iron using Sentry, as we know, can help protect your on-premise applications. We do a lot of things. One, providing you access to the internal data, access control, single sign-on. You can also do two-factor authentication. And as I mentioned before, you have the CASBs who do a good job, the cloud access security brokers who do a great job on the desktop side. But the challenge is the mobile app to cloud security problem and that's actually done by mobile line access. It can correlate conditional access based on user identity, device identity, and application identity. So, if you consider what CASBs do, what mobile line does, but 
let's step back and look at what do customers have, right? You have your enterprise apps in your data center, you have cloud-based applications now, you have desktops, those aren't going away, and then you have the new mobile-based applications. So how does this all fit in together, right? So desktop to a data center, mostly customers traditionally, right, have been doing this for the past 15, 20 years, 20 years, right, use a desktop VPN to your on-premise data center. And we have mobile ion sentry that can help you on the mobile side to get to your enterprise um, applications. CASBs cannot do that because they don't work on the data center side. CASBs though can help you secure data from your desktop to your cloud. But mobile and access is what allows you to secure the mobile apps to cloud-based services. So is the conditional access that mobile and access can provide you based on device and application posture. So what's also really important as I talked about before is the remediation. It's giving users feedback, the user experience if they are blocked in terms of what can they do to get secure access to these cloud-based services. So let's quickly look through that situation where the sales guy had actually downloaded it on a untrusted device on their spouse's iPad. When they go to Salesforce, as I mentioned before, it redirects it to access. You did not need anything specific on that device. There's no agent, okay? There's no agent sitting on that spouse's iPad because it's not mobile and registered. However, since it's coming through mobile and access, we can block access out here, throw up that page inside the Salesforce One application saying, go download it from your enterprise app store, apps at work, and get the managed or trusted Salesforce application. Let's look at the sloppy app and the parasite app problem, right? You have the sanctioned app on top, which is great. The sales guy did the right thing, right? By getting it as a managed app. In both situations, you go to Salesforce, redirect it to mobile ion access to check the app and device um, uh, posture. One get, gets access and the other can be blocked. So this is where access can solve that problem from mobile app to cloud security. So how does this fit in? This is the mobile ion architecture today, which most of you have deployed. You have mobile ion core, it can be mobile ion cloud, does not matter. You have your on-premise sentry, which is going to your services. The first version of access is on mobile ion sentry. One of the reasons we actually did this was we wanted to leverage your infrastructure. We did that with mobile ion tunnel. It was an upgrade to sentry, and boom, you had access to tunnel. Same thing with the last version of sentry that was released, sentry 801. You now have mobile ion access within sentry. So there are two components to this. One is there is a cloud administration portal. Okay, we built a cloud portal into, to give us agility in terms of supporting more and more cloud-based applications. And Access actually goes on Mobile Ion Sentry. It actually talks at the top, it gets configuration information, you know, which apps are secured from the admin portal. However, user traffic from the device never go, goes through the cloud portal. It always goes through the sentry. So the data flows between the device, user's device, the sentry to the cloud-based service. So let's double click into the flows here. How does this magic happen, right? What did we need to do? And actually there's a lot of technology under the covers that went in here, all based on standards. So typically if you see uh, and if you're using a cloud-based service today and using an identity provider, like an ADFS, Microsoft Active Directory Federation Services, Ping Identity, Okta, One Login, they are called the IDP, cloud-based services are called the service providers. You set up a trust relationship. You exchange what's called metadata. Okay, so it's basically certificate-based. So you, what, what it says is you can authenticate to your identity provider generate this SAML token, which is digitally signed, and when you present it to the service provider, it validates it, and it knows who the user is, and gives you a single sign-on. So that's what an organization would have deployed for a cloud scenario. What happens is we are building a three-way trust between the IDP, the cloud service provider, 
and mobile ion access where we are breaking the link between the IDP and the SP and mobile ion access becomes a service provider and an identity provider. This is also called a delegated identity provider. We build a trust relationship between the IDP and access as a service provider and we build another trust relationship by exchanging metadata between the cloud service provider and mobile and access as an identity provider. That's how the trust is built between the three components here or the three products here. So how does it work when a user actually clicks on an actual application? When they click on an application, let's say Salesforce One, it goes to Salesforce, which says, hold on, I don't have an access token from you. I don't know who you are. You need to go to your identity provider. Well, guess what? Now, the service provider trusts mobile ion access. So the authentication request comes through mobile ion access. Mobile ion access checks device posture, application posture. Is this app allowed? If not, we will present within the app the, the block page. If all is good, let's suppose it came through tunnel, we know it's a good app, good device, we simply pass the user off to the actual identity provider. So now the app, through a redirect, has landed on your actual identity provider as today. What happens next is the user logs in via whatever mechanisms you have today. Username and password. At Mobileye itself, we have a two-factor authentication mechanism called Duo Security, which, uh, which gives you, you know, it notifies you and you accept it. You can use whatever mechanism you want. But what happens is once the IDP authenticates you, it generates what's called a SAML assertion, the SAML token we talked about. But instead of sending it directly to Salesforce, it, it is trusting access as a service provider. It comes to mobile and access, where again, we do a check for device and application posture. If all is good, we re-sign that assertion and pass it on to the real cloud service provider. So now, the app gets single sign-on. So this is actually the inner workings of how mobile and access can be in the traffic flow for authentication and allow our block based on you know, correlating the device and application posture. So at a high level, as I mentioned before, there's, you could have the identity and access management software in the cloud, on-premise. Salesforce or the cloud service provider trusts mobile ion access on the sentry, and mobile ion access on the sentry trusts the actual IDP. You click on the app, tunnel comes up, you go to Salesforce, redirects you to mobile ion access, which checks device posture, application posture. If all is good, user authenticates, gets a SAML token, which is sent back to Salesforce. Also, what's really important is there can be only one IDP. Just like an EMM, there can be only one EMM provider, but what we have done is, in a, in a, in a way, injected ourselves as being the IDP. What's very important is desktop information can authentication information also flows through mobile and access, okay? So typically, you wouldn't block when it's going from a desktop. You want your traffic to flow through as it does today. And that's what would happen through mobile and access. We would simply know that it's coming from a desktop and the traffic goes through directly to your identity provider. Remember, it's only authentication traffic. Now, if you wanted to get granular, I give this example where Let's suppose you wanted to prevent Internet Explorer on a desktop from getting to Salesforce because we know IE is riddled with bugs, right? You could also put in rules within mobile and access saying Internet Explorer is not allowed to access my cloud service provider. Go and use Firefox or Chrome on a desktop. So this also plays inside the desktop world. So I wanted to also provide some information in terms of deployment cons considerations as you look to deploying mobile ion access. A few things. Before you insert mobile ion access, ensure that you're using an identity provider today. ADFS, Microsoft ADFS, Ping Identity, Okta, there are a lot of players out there today, right? 
ensure that you have single sign-on, what's called single sign-on of federation, working to your cloud service provider before you insert access in the mix. The next thing is, you insert access in the mix, but don't put in any block policies yet. Because it start giving, traffic will start flowing through access, you'll get great visibility into which users, which devices, which applications are actually going to your cloud service providers. After that, you can start buttoning down which apps can get access to your cloud-based services. Also something important to understand is on iOS, we take all traffic through the Sentry. As you probably heard at the keynote today from uh, GE, they use Mobile Ion Tunnel, but they prefer to take all the traffic because they put in other controls behind the scenes. They have proxies in line that look at, inspect the data, but in the future we are looking at adding what's called split tunneling. So today, you would take all the traffic through the Sentry and Mobile Ion Access. In the future, on iOS at least, we are looking at split tunneling, so only authentication traffic can go through Mobile Ion Access and the Sentry. You can deploy this on existing app tunnel sentries. So if you have app tunnel sentries today, great, you upgrade them to 801, and now you can start getting Mobile Ion Access capabilities. And questions come up, what about high availability? Well, whatever you've been doing with your app tunnel sentries in terms of using a load balancer in front of the sentries, you can leverage the same for mobile ion access. And with that, I'm open for questions. So